Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. We are heading to Duna today, but before that I thought I'd give a quick shout out to Aaron Thomas who found the hidden Easter egg in the thumbnail from last week. Well done, mate. You were the only person to find it. So as with our episode last week, we have set up the ultimate relay here and put it in a polar orbit around Duna. And this is simply so that we can pick some of these anomalies. Now, the anomalies here we're looking for can be grabbed just by rotating around the planet and just selecting them and hitting the waypoint option there. So we have found a very interesting anomaly here and we are getting some very interesting signals from it. So we need to create a vessel to go up and explore this thing. So for those of you that have watched The Martian, you may recall the Mars Ascent vehicle. Now what I've been trying to do here is make a similar looking vessel to this. So this is going to be called the Duna Ascent vehicle. The actual vessel itself, of course, is hidden in there behind the fairings. You'll get to see this pop out here shortly. For now, we are going to launch this thing with these three massive rocket cores to punch us up all the way to Duna. The Duna Ascent Vehicle, or DAV, is only going to need its engines just to come down to do the landing on Duna. The actual rocket cores themselves are going to get us all the way to an intercept with Duna and also help with our aero braking maneuver as we pass through Duna's atmosphere. The thrust to weight ratio of this rocket is around 1.2 at liftoff so we can start our gravity turn here quite early. Our crew for today is Burberry Kerman, our pilot Lenina Kerman, our scientist and Bill Kerman of course, our engineer. The two side boosters are linked with external fuel ducts to the central core booster, so we're going to decouple this now. There we go, leaving of course our central core fully fueled. This stage is going to get us up past orbital velocity and then the next stage is going to get us all the way to Duna. We are now just passing 1500 meters per second, only another 6-700 meters per second to go to get past orbital velocity and then we can start setting up our transfer. As we come out of the atmosphere, we're going to ditch these fairings. There we go there. Obviously they were set up there in a clamshell method with four separate segments. So there we go there, you can see the Duna Ascent vehicle in all its glory. It is kind of similar looking to the vessel in the Martian movie, but you know, you can only get these things so close with stock parts. So there we go there, we are now at orbital velocity. We'll just accelerate the video here while we're getting our transfer burn set up for Duna. Just some small adjustments with the prograde and retrograde markers there. There we go. There is still a little fuel left in stage 2 here, so we'll burn this out first. So there we go there, we'll fire that next stage. <laughs> and I obviously had my decoupler uh, staged in the wrong order there, so we blew that up. But no matter. Uh, this thing survived nicely there. Now in this stage we're going to need roughly two thirds of the fuel to get to our Duna transfer target. The full transfer burn to Duna is only a little above 1000 meters per second. So we've got that there fairly close. There we go. We'll just adjust this here shortly in a moment. Just a quick a normal burn I think is going to fix this up. Oh, that, that's the anti-normal marker. We'll turn to the normal marker. Uh, there we go. Just a small burn here. There we go. That will do just nicely. So we can now watch Kerbin fall away as we leave Kerbin's sphere of influence. Actually, I've just realized that this is the first manned mission. Uh, manned mission? Kerbled mission is probably the better word. The first Kerbled mission to Duna that I've done in this series. So we should have much science to collect out there. We haven't even planted a flag or anything on Duna at this stage. Just a small radial inburn to bring us down into Duna's atmosphere so that we can aero break and at the same time we're going to be doing an Ike flyby. Now of course because Duna's atmosphere is so very very thin and so very very low we are going to be passing very low in altitude through Duna's atmosphere around 13 kilometers from the surface. We do have plenty of fuel to burn in this stage that we've got here, so we are going to use our engines here to give us a bit of assistance as we pass through the atmosphere. 
We will of course let the atmosphere take as much of the velocity off us as we can and then we'll switch on those engines there just to reduce ourselves further down so that we fall into a duna orbit. So there we go there, we'll time warp now around to our apoapsis marker and we're going to just do a very small burn to drop this last stage down onto the surface of Duna so that we are leaving our space free of debris. Just a very small retrograde burn there just to bring our periapsis down under zero kilometers so that there should be more than enough to have our third stage there impact on Duna. We'll actually decouple here now. And there we go for the first time, we'll engage the engines of our Duna Ascent vehicle. And a very short burn in the prograde direction to raise that periapsis back up again. The next thing we need to do is set up our normal burn so that we can move our orbit. So that it's going to pass over our detected anomaly. Now if I didn't have loads of fuel in this stage, because we are going to be doing a refuel on Duna. Uh, then I probably would have tried to encounter Duna on a specific angle so that we didn't have to waste quite as much Delta V here doing a normal burn. But we did have plenty of fuel, so no problems. Just skimming over me, picking up a bunch of different science data. And you'll also notice here that I have a storage unit here hidden in the top of the vessel, which we can use to store all that wonderful science data in, meaning we can do lots and lots of scans and bring it all back. If you have a scientist Kerbal on board, of course you can hop out and you can reset those experiment containers. Lenina here, of course, is our Kerbal for this mission, so she's doing that quite nicely. And welcome back to the DAV, Lenina. Okay, so we've picked up our science from space around Juno. Now we're just going to do our maneuver burn here. And there we go, that should do it. We can now come in to find out what is so mysterious down here at this anomaly mark. What is the strange signal that we keep getting back through our ultimate relay about this particular location? Let's find out. There does seem to be quite an epic dust storm going on down here all around this mountain area. Now, Kerbnet at the start of this episode did report this mountain as being called Bill's Spine. I don't know if that's actually correct or whether that's just the location name for the marker that we plonked it down here. We'll drop out those landing legs. We've actually reduced pretty much all of our surface velocity, so we actually really don't need our drogue shoots. We'll give them a try here in a moment anyway. I don't even have time to deploy these fully, so we'll drop those and we'll do the full shoots. A very, very small landing burn there. And touchdown on the surface of Duna. Now we'll just pick up all of the wonderful science lying around here, utilizing the X Science Here and Now mod, which is a fantastic mod if you don't want to keep having to individually click each science module to actually pick all this stuff up. We'll just load all that science into the science container where we need to. And in this mission, Lenina is the very lucky scientist Kerbal to come down and be the very first Kerbal to touch down on the surface of Duna using her very own feet. Down the ladder she comes and just stepping off the ladder there. The first Kerbal feet to touch the surface of Duna in all Kerbin history. Okay Burberry, don't get upset, you can come down too, we couldn't have a mission without you. So, satellite imagery from our ultimate relay shows our mission as a complete success so far. Our three Kerbals standing here like they own the place. After a few hours walking around on the surface, they have picked up a few interesting readings. Nevertheless, it is time to stop buggering around. Lenina Kerbin, you are needed back in our Duna Ascent vehicle so that you can do some analysis. And of course, Bill Kerman, your engineering expertise is needed up on board the Duna Ascent vehicle as well. And, oh, damn you, Bill, I can see why Shadow Zone has so much damn trouble with you. That's it, you can just take the ladder like a normal Kerbal. 
So Burberry Kerman, your mission is to check out the strange signals, the strange readings coming from the anomaly. What could all that interference be coming from just over that mountain range? And yep, that will pretty much explain it. We have landed quite a distance away from this anomaly, so hopefully we have enough RCS fuel in our jetpack to make it there and back again without running out. Let's see. We are of course speeding up the footage here so you're not watching this entire thing in real time. And oh, 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 didn't quite make it bounce right off the inside of it there somehow. What the heck happened there? Come on Burberry, get up and stop mucking around. Just because this is the greatest find in all history doesn't mean you've got the excuse to be a cowboy. Come on, get up on top of this thing. There we go there, and what a beautiful shot there, a gigantic Kerbal face. So the next best thing to do here, I guess, is to stick a flag in it. So let's do that. Uh, huge face would be the appropriate tagline, I think, to use there. Interesting that you can just disappear inside the structure like that. I wonder if the eyeballs do the same thing. Interesting. They seem quite solid, actually, compared to the rest of the face. Okay. We have just over half our RCS fuel here left, so we should be able to make it back. We are going uphill a little more this time, so fingers crossed. Of course, in real life, there is no way that you could do this sort of thing with an EVA pack. There is just no way that these things put out that much force. It sure is fun, though. <laughs> okay, coming into land. Ow! <laughs> Come on, get up. Up the ladder you go, Burberry. This has been quite a mission. There is a lot of information to report back to Kerbin, especially now Burberry has come back alive. So in we board there. We are now going to be doing some refueling. Radiators and drills out now. Our ladders can come up and we've basically got hidden away up on top of the vessel our Convertitron unit. And look how fast this thing refuels with Bill, our five-star engineer, on board. Now that we are fully fueled, we need to make sure that our phase angle is correct in comparison to Kerbin's orbit, so we can do this with Kerbal Engineer there in the bottom right hand corner. There are other great mods like Transfer Planner which will let you do this sort of thing in an easier way. I tend to just stick with Kerbal Engineer and just the Transfer Window Planner website. Bringing in those solar panels and launching. Obviously on Duna we can do our gravity turn pretty much as soon as we lift off. There's hardly any atmosphere to slow us down here, so we're going to punch straight out of the atmosphere very quickly. And there, after 800 meters per second, that's basically enough for now. We will wait until we transfer out to our apoapsis marker before we circularize our orbit. And just a very small burn there, and there we go, we're already in orbit there now. Solar panels back out for our journey back to Kerbin. And after setting up that transfer burn, we can now time warp around to our manoeuvre node and do our final burn for this stage. We have a burn of over 800 meters per second to do here. This stage is going to get us some of that way and then the next stage is going to get us just that final, final leg of our journey. Decoupling there and we are running now on a single Terrier engine. Now this stage has got plenty of Delta V, more than enough to get us to Kerbin from here. That is not going to be a problem. What we are going to do is just pick up any science that we might be missing at this stage. I don't think we're missing anything. You may have noticed that it takes more Delta V to get from Kerbin to Duna than it does to get from Duna to Kerbin. This is due for the most part because Kerbin's gravity is much higher than Duna's gravity. So we just don't need as much energy to escape Duna's sphere of influence in the first place. So we can watch that beautiful sight of Duna falling away from us there. And now of course we'll just do a few very small adjustments to make sure that our trajectory back into Kerbin is pretty much spot on. We do of course want to come in and aero break in the atmosphere before we land. We're not going to be doing any retrograde burns to get into a low Kerbin orbit or anything like that. We don't have the fuel for that. We are going to come straight in and land. Coming around here, we will basically stop our time warp as soon as we hit Kerbin's sphere of influence and we'll just do a few slight radial in adjustments. We'll just bring our periapsis there down to around 20 kilometers. That should be more than enough atmosphere to slow us down. 
We'll just turn in an anti-normal direction and decouple that last stage there just so it doesn't come back and hit us. And there we go, Bill, Lanina and Burberry Kerman, hold on to your hats, this is going to be a pretty hot ride. Because this is a light vessel and we are hitting the atmosphere very hard and fast, we are removing a lot of our velocity here very quickly. The ablator here is actually quite interesting, no matter how fast I ever seem to enter, I pretty much only use a small percentage of the ablator that is actually there on the heat shield. So I don't think you ever really need it or you could pretty much remove half of the ablator I think and you would still have plenty to come into land. And we won't jettison that heat shield, we leave it on and there <laughs> we go there, touchdown. I was actually finding that if I jettisoned my heat shield I would explode the MK2 lander can so that was no good. I just left the heat shield on there. If you are downloading this vessel, maybe add some landing legs to that last stage, that would probably be a good move. So loads of science there that I can't do anything with because I've already unlocked everything. There will of course now be a very serious debriefing with Lanina, Burberry and Bill to try to figure out what was going on up there at the anomaly. Will there be another mission soon to Duna? Let's hope so, there is a lot more to explore. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed that video, please take a second, give it a thumbs up, all your support helps a great deal. If you have any questions, please do whack them down in the comments below, I do enjoy answering your questions. Thanks very much of course to all of you that have subscribed, and for those who haven't yet, please do subscribe to see more, follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we'll see you in the next video. Using our RCS thrusters there to slowly pull the lunar module out there. Both the command surface module and the lunar module of course is at this point fully fueled in real life. We have again cut a lot of the fuel out to make this a little more realistic so that we are kind of simulating them.